There are many excellent books on the market for people who are very interested in writing and who aspire to be writers. Seven Steps to Confident Writing is for a different reader. Our target is somebody who doesn't necessarily have a professed interest in writing, may not even like it that much, but this is a person who understands that writing is important in life and they feel that they need to become better at it. What they are looking for is something that has considerable structure to it, a method that has real structure to it, and they want to get some sense of the big picture of what writing is all about. Many of us grow up being told that we don't write well, and so naturally we regard writing negatively. In that respect, it's not that dissimilar from people who are told that uh, they can't carry a tune and so they don't enjoy singing, or they're uncoordinated and they don't enjoy sports. We want to make writing something that everyone can enjoy. Being overly critical is at odds with that goal. And don't forget, there are plenty of people out there who are quick to judge you harshly. Don't be one of them. Writing demands to be taken seriously. As a writer, you are asking a reader to give you a precious resource, which is time, because we all have very busy lives. So when you enter into a contract with the reader, you are promising to deliver prose that is uh, clear, concise, well-constructed, and deeply committed. At the same time, as a writer, you're entering into a contract with yourself, which is that you will perform your writing with rigor. The first thing you have to know about procrastination is that it's a response to fear, and fear is an inevitable part of the writing process. There is no writer, no matter how lowly or great that person is, who is not afraid of a blank page or a blank screen. Your job is to overcome that fear, and the way to do that is by tricking your mind. You might give yourself a quota. You might give yourself a deadline. You might give yourself a reward. There are tricks, but the mind needs tricks. The narrative is an extremely powerful form. We all love stories. We always have loved stories from the dawn of history. When you can inject some sense of storytelling into your writing, you can enliven it. So even a situation in which storytelling seems to have no place at all, like let's say a letter of complaint, for instance, you can in somehow enliven your writing and capture the reader's attention with just an element of narrative. When you understand what drafts are about, it demystifies the whole process, and it takes away from that amorphous quality. The first draft, for instance, has a specific purpose. Mostly you're dealing with structure. How can I tell the story in a way that gives it life? How can I tell in a story that, in a way that makes it clear? The second draft, you go on to other concerns, let's say issues of tone, issues of point of view, although you may still be dealing with uh, structural problems as well. In the third draft, you may begin to focus even more on tone, word choice, um, and in the, um, as many drafts as it takes, obviously, you will continue with it, and then you get to the point where you do a polish just to make it absolutely free of problems. That may seem improbable, but in fact, I see it all the time. As soon as people understand that it's not an amorphous activity, but it has a purpose and a clarity, and they can grab hold of it, they begin to improve. Discouragement and frustration take a back seat, and actually excitement can flow in and energy. There are, in fact, simple ways to quickly improve your writing. For instance, starting sentences with subjects and verbs can be uh, a very speedy way of making your writing clearer. At the same time, uh, using less adjectives and adverbs will quickly improve the quality of your writing. I always tell writers that readers will never hold good, clean, simple writing against you. It's the tangled, fancy, overstriving stuff that's going to get you in trouble.
Writing is communication, writing is expression, writing is connection. Anytime you sit down to do a piece of writing, you have the opportunity to connect, express, and communicate. And that is exciting business. If we have not made that connection, if we get a blank look from a reader or a scratch on the head or a huh, then we know we haven't adequately done that work. At the same time, writing allows you to connect with yourself. Many writers keep journals or diaries to um, continue this process of self-discovery, but if that doesn't work with your uh, schedule or that's not something you're interested in, that you don't have to worry about that. There's always the potential for self-discovery every time you sit down to write. I would like people to understand that writing is a basic form of expression that should be available to everyone. There's strength and power to be had from writing. There's discovery and self-realization. Perhaps most significantly, there's communication and connection. These are all reasons to make writing a significant part of your life.